500,000 views. Who would have thought that my first tutorial ever would have garnished so much attention and so much love? It's truly the best part of that tutorial for me was all the awesome comments you guys sent me, all the love saying I was the best teacher ever, that no one could ever teach you better, and that I was the best teacher. Yeah, you, you guys were amazing. So you guys had thousands of comments, thousands, tons of say. Most of it was love, but some of it was questions. And these guys were the top 10 most commonly asked questions. So number one, this was almost nearly, probably so, the most commonly asked question. Quick stop while in a high gear. Well, <laughs> enjoy guys, because that means we got to rip it up the top speed. Oh hell, my that dirt bike's faster. We got to go. Once you're up in a top gear, just hauling butt. If you want to come to a quick stop, this is what you do. You ready? Just pull that clutch lever in. Remember, clutch and throttle. Just pull it in quick. Apply the brakes. You don't even have to worry about shifting down. It was that easy. Rear brake, front brake. Clutch, throttle. Let me demonstrate one more time. Get up to speed. Now quick stop clutch and apply the brakes now once you come to a complete stop I know the question is there how do you you, you just can't take off in six gear nope no you can't coordination so what you got to do is you start tapping while you're holding the clutch start shifting down on the gear lever all the way through the gears now if the gear lever goes down only about three which would mean you're in third gear at that point and it gets stiff it won't shift anymore that's simply because you have to move the clutch uh, excuse me you got to move the transmission just a little bit to kind of nudge the rest of those dog teeth over so here we go just all you all you're gonna do if that happens release the clutch just a little bit and then start shifting down again click 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 now you're in first and look at this guys ready to rock and roll so I can demonstrate how fast I can do this you ready Alright, here we go. Quick stop, pull in the clutch, slam on the brakes. Oh god, look out for the squirrel. Shift down, you're in first gear and you move around them. That easy, guys. Number two, are you able to take off in a higher gear? You can take off in a higher gear, but it's like riding a bicycle. Remember when you're in first gear, it's super easy, like, hell, but you don't even have to, like, the quad can move itself easily in first gear. But if I take off in third or fourth gear, it wants to stall, right? Well, it's like on a bicycle. If you're in first gear, and <laughs> if you're in first gear, it's super easy to start pedaling. But if you all of a sudden put it in sixth gear, come to a stop, and you try to pedal, it's super hard on the legs. It's the same concept. The difference is the motor has the power to move the quad, but it's going to be at the cost of wearing your clutch plates, okay? So essentially, if you take off in second, we're going to have to feather this clutch a little bit more, which means basically you're keeping those RPMs up, and you're essentially the clutch and the transmission. There's a clutch basket and clutch plates, okay? The clutch basket is connected directly to the gears, okay, the transmission. So if you're in neutral, there's, they're just free, free riding, okay? But the minute you put it in a gear, those clutch plates want to engage and then stick. And that's how you roll forward. Well, as you're feathering the transmission to take off in a higher gear, is the longer the longer you feather it to take to get going, the more those clutch plates are rubbing against each other, essentially wearing them down, wearing them out faster. Let me go ahead and demonstrate for you guys. All right. So first gear, watch how quick I can disengage, because the faster you disengage the clutch, the faster you can get the transmission and the clutch to fully engage and there's no slippage. You ready? One Mississippi. It only took me one second of slippage to get that clutch to mate with the basket and there's no more slippage. But if I take F, uh, let's say take F, <laughs> take off in second or third, watch. Ready? Here we go. About three seconds, and if I take off in third, 
See, the quad won't even take off on its own. It'll die. So now you give it more gas, so your clutch is spinning faster, causing more wear, and I'm going to have to feather it for... It was about five or six seconds. So for five or six seconds, for five or six seconds, your clutch is burning essentially. So yes, you can take off in a higher gear, but there's no point unless you're drag racing. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate. For drag racing, it's okay because you're literally going to dump the clutch. Dumping means to just let it go. And it, it instantly engages and you spin the tires and you're good. So, to answer your question, yes, you can take off in a higher gear, but you really should do only do it for drag racing. Here's, here's second gear. Watch how fast I dump the clutch. Ready? So that's, that's really the only reason you would want to take off in a higher gear from a dead stop, is if you're drag racing. Otherwise, there's no point. You're losing performance and you're burning your clutch. Okay, number three. What happens if you shift up to second gear after neutral instead of downshifting the first gear? Well, that's that's the same. Uh, get it, boy. That's that's the same concept, basically. Of are you able to take off in higher gear? So, if I'm in neutral, essentially like this, neutral. And if the gears are confusing, watch my original video. I'll put the link in the description and at the end page. But we 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 gotta. We got to stay on topic for this video. So if you're in neutral, as you guys know it, you're going to shift up on most all machines. So yes, I can from a dead stop go into second gear. But again, it, it, it just adds a little bit extra wear on the clutch. But it's not a huge deal. But yes, you can certainly do that. Just keep in mind, extra wear and tear means more rebuilds. I would only take off in second gear, truthfully, if you're drag racing. All right, question number four. Max speed per gear. Well, every machine is going to be different, obviously, because they're all geared differently. They all have different power. But max speed per gear, if you have no speedometer, is essentially, when you feel like this is a gigantic vibrator, it's probably a good idea to shift up but no seriously guys it depends are you riding or are you racing if you're racing you're gonna wind that gear out to the very end just like this you ready that's max for the gear Well, Quad Nation, when you're racing, how do you know when to shift still? I mean, you're maxing out the gear, but how do you know when to shift? Well, that's a great question, guys. With the exception of my Raptor, because it's a built race machine and holds its power to the very end of red line, other quads or dirt bikes, as, as let me get it in neutral, the machine is naturally going to uh, the power is going to climb, 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 and it's going to it's going to climb, 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 and eventually it's going to peak out and start plummeting. When you feel the acceleration starting to um, let off a little bit, the the rate of acceleration, you can feel it. You're pulling, you're pulling, you can feel it in your hands, and all of a sudden it just kind of seems like the quad just kind of starts accelerating at a slower pace. That's because you're coming at the end of the gear. You need to shift. Okay, so that's for racing. Now. If you're cruising and you're riding, you're just, just riding, how do you know max speed for each gear? Well, it's simple. When you're riding, you're not wanting to put tons and tons of stress on the machine, so you're not going to be running it to red line. So it's kind of like this. Here how it's really high pitch. And it feels like a gigantic vibrator. That's time to shift. See, now I shift. Okay? And I can run it up through this gear and right here. And then, and then, and then, and then, time to shift. Okay? Now it sounds normal again. And right here, it sounds super high pitch. And then, and then, and then, my feet, my feet are literally vibrating. It feels like a, just the whole thing's a vibrator, okay? That's when you know to shift again. And although this was not a question by many, but I'll go ahead and state it since we're on the same subject. How do you know if you're going too slow in a gear? Well, too slow in a gear, you're going to hear it's going to go. The noise I made in the first video was <laughs> really awesome. It sounds like this. Watch. 
when you go to give it gas. And you'll notice when you go to give it throttle, it just doesn't go. It does, but at a very slow pace. So if you're riding around and you just, you're not paying attention, you're clicking up, and you go to roll on the throttle and it sounds like you're in too high of a gear. Clutch control after takeoff. Now, <laughs> this was actually probably the second most frequently asked question. You ready? Clutch control after takeoff. So you guys know on takeoff, you got to let out the clutch real slow. And if you have to count, count the 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom, clutch is out, right? You guys know clutch control from a dead stop is paramount. Very important, because otherwise you're just gonna, oh, well, this thing has a lot of torque. Or you're gonna just stall out, or it won't wheelie on this road because it's really loose dirt, but if you're on something that your tires stick and you pop it out too fast, boom, you go backwards. So clutch control is very important. However, the question was, clutch control after takeoff once you're rolling in first this is this is what you need to do when you're ready to shift so we're getting up speed it feels like a gigantic vibrator ready let go of the throttle pull the clutch in shift up we're in second now we don't let this out slowly we pop it okay that's because once you're rolling from a dead stop that transmit that clutch you need to let it engage as fast as possible because if you slowly let it if you're giving a gas and you're slowly letting it out in second see how that sounded it's eating those clutch plates guys so make sure that from after you're rolling anytime you pull that clutch in you pop it out you can hold it in as long as you want given that you don't come to a stop but you want to make sure that if you pull it in, the shift, watch. Let go of the throttle, pull the clutch in, I shifted. I can still hold it in if I want, but make sure when you release it, you pop it out. So it just looks like this. This is how naturally one would shift. See how that works, guys? You want to minimize the amount of clutch burn, and that's by letting the clutch out fast during each shift, with the exception of coming from a dig from a complete stop next question number six can you shift from three to one without releasing the clutch or do you have to release the clutch during each shift very good question absolutely that's the preferred method actually you ready so we're in third gear we're you know kind of messing around with our buddies now pull it in we're gonna slow down say we just gonna I don't know make a turnaround so we're gonna go back to first. I'm in first gear now, I've shifted down twice. I'm just gonna release the clutch and I'm gonna turn around. That simple. The only time I would rep through all the gears, meaning I'm going to, let me demonstrate, get up into a higher gear. The only time I'm going to legitimately go shift down, and let go of the clutch, basically I'm letting the engine do the braking is if I'm on my four stroke because it's not very safe on a two stroke can I can a two stroke handle it yes but again more wear and tear because there's less lube going into the cylinders on a two stroke during power braking so I will rep through the gears on my four stroke so that question it really depends on what kind of machine you're on but on a four stroke you ask well why would you do it on a four stroke because it sounds cool as hell because when i'm on my four stroke if i shift down it goes bah, 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 and blows and pops and everything it sounds just honestly it sounds wicked so i'm a rep through and also my engine is braking meaning my engine is naturally slowing the quad down because of it because of its torque and everything and you don't use your brakes and all that so it's fun on a four stroke on a two stroke if you get up in a higher gear right higher gear just pull the clutch in to whatever desired speed you're gonna go like this would probably be about second see perfect I'm slowing down to get a good shot of my brother that's it so can be done it's best on a four stroke only shift down do you have the clutch all right this one I'm gonna have to shut the quad off I've 
got to I've got to demonstrate something to you guys. Shifting down, do you have to clutch? Uh, you guys know I do a lot of drag racing. A common question in those videos is coordination. You should, why do you power shift, which I'm going to go over that another day, but you know, that's basically where you don't let go of the throttle and you still use the clutch. But anyhow, why do you power shift quad, quad why do you power shift coordination versus clutchless shift, which a lot of people feel is a faster method of shifting? That's because you have to be, you have to have your shift points perfect. Let me demonstrate. Say these are two gears in the transmission, or even just one big one, right? When you're under throttle, meaning you're delivering power to the ground, the gears are, the tension is torqued one way or the other. Let's just use, say it's this way. So you have tension on your transmission in this, in this form, right? The minute you let go of the throttle, your engine will naturally, that's when you can feel the quad like instantly slow down real fast. That's engine braking. The engine naturally, when it's not under throttle, will break. It will literally slow your quad down. So what it does is if you're under throttle, the gears are torqued this way. The minute you let go of the throttle, the gears are torqued this way. So there's constant torque one way or the other, except for that moment when you let go of the throttle, there's a a space and time just the just a moment in time where it's transitioning from under torque to power braking okay so the when you clutchless shift you basically the minute you let go of the throttle that's when you're going in that in that limbo if you will is when you're going to click the gear and go into a higher gear or a lower gear i will demonstrate for you guys but the problem is you have just a moment where that gear is in limbo right in the middle because it's going literally under power no power well under power power braking so you got to catch it when it's between those two states, okay? So I can do that. I prefer not to because you do risk, if you don't get it right, you risk ripping a tooth off in the transmission or screwing up your dogs, whatever it may be. I just choose not to do it. Get it, boy! I prefer power shifting. I will go over all that later. I, I, I like power shifting. So... Can you clutchless? Can you shift down without a clutch? Yes, but keep in mind, if you don't hit it perfect in that limbo, you will destroy your transmission. It may not happen the first time, may not happen the second time, but at some point, you're going to start shredding teeth off or shaving down gears. So I will demonstrate for you guys real quick. Just bear with me. I know this tutorial has been long. Please smash that like button if you're if you're enjoying it or learning something. Here we go. So clutchless shifting. You still can't do it from a very dig, okay? You have to get moving with the clutch, okay? Otherwise, you'll just stall the machine. But let's just say, I'm gonna get into third gear to do it, ready? So we're in second gear. So as you see, I have throttle. I'm not giving a lot, but I'm gonna give it a little bit. And then as soon as I let go of the throttle, I'm gonna click up and you're gonna see I'm not gonna use the clutch, you ready? Coordination did it, guys! Flawlessly! <laughs> and you ask, well, how do you know you did it flawlessly? Well, let me demonstrate. When you roll on the throttle, I'm trying to click it up right now, but I'm still rolling on the throttle. It won't work. It won't work. So, that's because, let me demonstrate. While I was still under throttle, it was torqued this way. It will not, you cannot shift the gear. But the reason I know I was flawlessly in between the two points was because when I did shift it, it was smooth, it didn't grind, it didn't do anything like that. So ultimately at the end of the day, I felt that was flawless clutchless shifting. Now I will shift down as well. Here we're gonna do it again, ready? And it is a quick way to shift. It's just not the best method, guys. So here we go, I'm gonna get up to speed. So I'm in sixth gear. As soon as I let, as soon as I let go of the throttle, remember it's gonna go in limbo, I'm gonna shift down. Right there. But you can't shift down again 
simultaneously because now it's stuck this way. The entire time the quad is braking, it's the clutch is, is in torque this way. So what you got to do is, in order to shift down again, you got to roll on the throttle, let go. Again, can't shift down now. It's still it's still engine braking, so you got to roll on the throttle. See how I did that? Basically, you got to make sure that clutch is in limbo every time. That means you will have to play with the throttle. If you're still kind of confused on that one, I understand that was a lot of information to take in. Just say, hey, coordination, can you go over another video of clutchless shifting? And I will for you guys, because you guys are awesome. You are all my buddies. Number eight, can you brake to a full stop when you're in a higher gear? Yes, that's just like the question, quick stop while in a high gear. Uh, can you brake to a full stop when you're in a higher gear? We already demonstrate that but it wasn't necessarily a quick stop, so that's why I did put that one on there. Quick stop was, you know, you pull in the clutch and slam on the brakes. If we're up to speed, in a higher gear, and we want to come to a stop, just more of a casual stop. Say, okay, there's my turn way up there. Pull in the clutch. You can, if you want, start repping through the gears nice and easily give it give it about four to seconds between each shift and by the time we get to our turn we're now in first gear okay the reason I did put this question on there even though it's so similar to the first question or second one whatever it was is because if you try to rep through the gears really fast while going super fast you're gonna hear it's gonna go click 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 really hard that's because the transmission is moving so fast and it's it's you're you're selecting different gears while it's moving that fast it's actually really hard on the transmission so if you plan to rep down through the gears let the machine slow down okay so let me demonstrate i'm gonna dem i'm gonna rep through the gears really fast so i'm going fast watch I know you guys could probably, I don't know if you could hear, but probably, but as I was shifting, when I got into about second and third, you could hear just boom, boom. That's because you're literally throwing the, uh, the gear selector all the way over while across the drive line, while the drive line is spinning super fast. So the best preferred method, if you're going fast, fast if you don't want to shift down all the gears from a dead stop you should probably do it like this pulling the clutch start slowing down and as you slow down to say maybe five seconds fifth maybe about another three seconds fourth maybe about another three or four seconds third a couple more seconds second a couple more seconds now we're in first and boom look how flawless that was absolutely beautiful guys number nine do you have to let go of the throttle during each shift? I do not when I'm drag racing or when I'm playing around with my buddies and what an optimal performance because ultimately power shifting boosts you in each gear that you shift up into. I'm going to go over that later. But for longevity of your quad or dirt bike, you want to allow... You, you, you want to do what's easiest and most effective to the machine to wear it longevity. But yes, you do want to let go of the throttle between each gear because that is going to ensure the most longevity out of your equipment, out of your transmission, the engine, everything else like that. I do it again during power ra or drag racing because it does help you. So, power shifting you guys know is... See how hard it like boosted me in each gear? You can but you're going to wear things out faster, both in the transmission and the clutch. Now, the most effective way is, guys, be honest, roll on the throttle, let go of the throttle, pull in the clutch, shift up, let go of the clutch, roll on the throttle, just like I showed you in the very first tutorial. I'll demonstrate one more time for you guys. Ready? Shifting in the third, let go of the throttle, pull in the clutch, shift the lever up, let go of the clutch, roll on the throttle. That is the most preferred method for longevity guys and 
every shift matters when it comes to the throttle. Number 10, the final question guys, why would you want to go from second to neutral? Very good question. So I'm in second gear. If I plan on, okay, I'm gonna stop here, pull up next to my brother, there's really no reason to go into first. So I could pull in the clutch, shift half a click to neutral, let go of the clutch, boom, I'm here. However, there is nothing wrong with being in second. You wanna come to a stop? put it down in first, pull in the clutch, shift it half a click up, be in neutral. Nothing wrong with that. I will say, when you're first beginning, it is easier to find neutral because you know neutral is situated between first and second. It is naturally just easier, for whatever reason, to find neutral while you're in first, clicking it up half a notch up. I think it's more just control with your foot, to be honest. That looks like it sums it up, guys. I love you guys. Thank you for showing me so much love in my first tutorial that I made nearly two years ago. You guys are awesome. Show me the love in this one. Smash that like button. One last thing, before we end this video, look at these cool stickers, guys. Nemesis, half helmet, half Punisher skull, okay? I'm selling those to fund a drone for the channel because during a lot of my riding videos I'm going to have the drone follow me by its tracking device and get epic footage because at the end of the day I want to give you all the best form of entertainment but also enjoying the beauty of quad riding. So please help me out and purchase some of those stickers. With that being said, I love you guys and I hope you were able to take something back from this video. This is Squad Nation 929. I'm out.